Hey everyone and welcome to Wicode. Where in this video, we're going to learn how to accept payments with Stripe's checkout or Stripe's pre-built form using Express. So here's an example we're going to build. This is HTML served up from our Express server over here. And when we click this button, it creates something called a Stripe checkout session, which is this pre-built form containing information about our product. So here's the product, which is Witceptor, which is my Chrome extension. And we fill out this form. So fill out all the stuff, our test credit card, fill out all the other information. And when we click pay, what it'll do is it'll send an event to something called a webhook on our Express server, which we will handle. And then we'll create a custom checkout page for the user. So thanks for your order, and then the name of the customer. So we're gonna learn how to handle all this stuff using Express and Stripe. So Stripe offers multiple ways to collect payments, including no code options, like just generating a link, and code required options, like using a pre-built payment form. In this video, we're gonna focus on collecting payments using Stripe's pre-built form. And Stripe's pre-built payment form requires minimal coding and is the best choice for most integrations because it has all the needed functionalities for accepting payments while also being fairly customizable. And Stripe's pre-built payment form is called Stripe Checkout. And this form can be embedded into a web page or it can be a separate page hosted by Stripe. Either way, it's used to collect one-time payments or subscriptions. I'll leave a link in the description for more information on Stripe Checkout, but essentially Stripe Checkout is the pre-built form. But now we've got some background information out of the way, let's actually start working with our project. So before we start working with Stripe, we're gonna initiate this as an NPM project. So I'm gonna run NPM init, es6-y. Now we have our package.json file. And now let's install Express, and let's also install Nodemon as a development dependency. Now inside our package.json file, let's create our entry point, and we're gonna set that to source-server.js which let's create that. So a directory called source and a file called server.js. And then let's change our, let's create a start script right here. And what it's gonna do is use nodemon, provide an environment variable file, and then run our entry point. Note that to use this env file flag, you must be using node version 20.11 or higher. So if you're not using that, use something like .env. But now let's create this environment variable file. So the top level of our project, which is gonna be called .env. And this will house information such as the location of our express server and also some important Stripe variables. But let's start off by just creating our express server location. We're gonna have host, port, and URL. That's our project setup out of the way. So now let's work on connecting our application to the Stripe API. And this is done with the Stripe secret key. And you can find these at this URL. Um, I'll paste it in the description. But essentially, it is the URL dashboard stripe.com dash test dash API keys. And in here we can find right, let me zoom in a bit, right here we can see our secret key. So make sure you copy this key and then inside our environment variable file, let's create a variable called stripe secret key and then placed in your secret key in here. So this isn't my actual secret key, but it'll look something similar to this. And so essentially the stripe secret key identifies our application with stripe and thus allows us to use the API. But now let's connect a node to Stripe. And to do this, we need to use the Stripe NPM package. So just install it with npm i Stripe. And this package is a wrapper to the Stripe API and it allows us to create customers, retrieve invoices, do all the stuff we can with Stripe. So now that we have our, our variables set up and Stripe and, and Express installed, we can start coding. And the first thing we're gonna do is in our server.js file, I'm just gonna import Stripe, Express, initiate our uh, environment variables, and also instantiate an Express app and Stripe. You can see that we need to provide the Stripe secret key to a Stripe, to the Stripe constructor, which returns an instance, which we can then use to work with the Stripe API. However, before we continue, what I wanna do is create a Stripe product to sell. And so note that this can be done through the Stripe dashboard. I'm gonna leave a link to that in the description, but we can also use the API. And that's what we're gonna do in this video. Um, I'm just gonna create a separate file in here called product.js and essentially creating a product to sell includes defining the name, description, price, which we can do right here. So, and we need to import Stripe at the top of the file. So here I'm gonna import Stripe, and then we're gonna create an instance of it, just like this. But so essentially here, we're creating a product which can represent either physical goods or a service that we're selling. We call it Witceptor, which is the name of my Chrome extension, if you're interested, link in the description. And then we provide a description of what it is. So my Chrome extension lets you control your browser network traffic. And the only required property when creating a product is the name key right here. And after creating a product, 
we need to create a price for it. And essentially a price just represents the cost of a product. So what I'm gonna do is after here, I'm gonna paste in this right here. So now we use the Stripe API to create a, a price and we assign it a product, an amount, and a currency. This unit amount property right here is a positive integer in cents or local equivalent or zero for a free price that represents how much to charge. So when we're using USD or US dollars, right here 1,000 equates to $10 or 1,000 cents. And just a quick note, Stripe products, products and prices are separate so that we can update a product's price without changing the actual product. But now let's just run this so we can create this product. So this will create this product and assign a price to it or assign it to a price in our dashboard. So what I'm gonna just do is run node, I'm gonna provide our env file, and then I'm gonna run source-product.js. And I get a bad option because I'm using node version 18. So let me update this. So I've used NVM to switch to node version 20.11. And now if I run that previous command, we can see we have created a price. So we've logged out right here a price object. And this is important because we need to copy this price ID. Of course, this will have created that in our Stripe dashboard, so we can find it in there too and get the price ID from there. But I'm just gonna copy it from here. But essentially, take this price ID and inside our server file, price it, paste it in here. So I'm gonna call this, or inside our environment variable file, Stripe price ID and paste it just like that. And so we're gonna use this Stripe price ID for creating our checkout session. So essentially, it'll this is what will show this, the product to the user on that pre-built uh, payment form page. And of course, we'll see more of that later. But now let's bring this into our server file. So first, I'm just gonna paste in Stripe price ID to capture it like this. But now that we've created our product that we want to sell, let's create a Stripe checkout hosted page. So in other words, we're gonna generate that Stripe checkout page. And to do this, we first need to create an HTML form that takes a user to a route that generates something called a checkout session. And so I'm just gonna paste in, once again, some code here. And all it is is a simple pull this down. It's just a simple HTML document where we have some styling and all it is is a form with a button that just says buy Wit Scepter for $10 and it's going to when when you click this button it will send a post request to our server URL and then a route called dash session which of course we'll create but we want to serve up all of this on our main route. So in this route right here we're going to send back this HTML but now let's code the route that handles this HTML form. So specifically, when a user clicks the submit button, we're gonna generate a checkout session and then redirect them to it. And we can do this once again using the Stripe API. So in the route right here, post to URL dash session, I'm gonna paste in some code right here. So this will handle that button click. So what we're doing is creating a Stripe checkout session. We set the mode to payment and setting to payment means we're accepting one-time payments. Then we have line items right here which is a list of the items the customer is purchase, purchasing, and each item includes its price and quantity. So we have our price ID and our quantity. Then we have a success URL right here, which is the URL the customer will be redirected to after the payment is successful. Note how we also have a query parameter right here of session ID, and this is a template variable that Stripe will replace with the customer's session ID. We can then use this to generate a custom success HTML page, and then we have a cancel URL. And if we set this cancel URL, then a back button is displayed on the Stripe checkout page. And if that button is clicked, then they're redirected to this cancel URL. But this checkout session object that we create right here represents the customer's session as they pay. So if the payment is successful, it contains a reference to the customer and either the successful payment intent or active subscription. But an important property of this is the URL property, which is the URL that takes the customer to a Stripe hosted payment page. So right here, this URL property will take them to the, our pre-built payment form, which is hosted on Stripe. But so after this payment is complete, so after they go to this session URL, fill out their payment e details and buy something, we need to handle the success, or in Stripe's words, fulfill the order. And this is done by something called a webhook. And a Stripe webhook is an HTTP endpoint that receives events from Stripe. Let me actually pull up an image. So this right here is a webhook. So specifically, after a payment is complete, Stripe will send a post request to a route that we configure on our server containing information about the payment. After we process this payment, then Stripe will redirect the user to the success URL that we defined. So for, as an example, the customer bought, say they go there on that pre-built payment form, 
they buy something. This goes to Stripe and Stripe has, and now Stripe wants to let us know that they bought something. So they send a post request to our webhook on our express server, and then we can do what we want with it. So it'll contain the payment information, customer information. So we could set that customer in our database to show that they've paid, um, things like that. So this is essentially where we handle the logic for a customer buying something. And then if all of that goes well, they get sent to our success URL that we define right here. But so like most things with Stripe, we can create a webhook pro programmatically with the API or the dashboard. However, for testing webhooks locally, we need to use the Stripe CLI. And essentially, the Stripe CLI helps us build and test a Stripe integration locally from the terminal. And this includes securely testing the webhooks that we've created, or the one that we're going to create. And the Stripe CLI can be installed by following the directions on a link I'll post in the description. But let me pull it up real quick. So it can be found on this link, github.com, Stripe, Stripe CLI. And then scroll down to installation, and for your operating system, you'll see how to install it. It's pretty straightforward. But after you've done that, back inside um, a terminal, so I'm going to right here, we can check if it's installed successfully by running Stripe and then dash V. We can see I'm using version 1.19.5. And after we've done this, what we need to do is run the command Stripe login. And this will essentially allow us to log in or pair our terminal to our Stripe account. So if we click enter right here, what we're going to get is a pairing code. And if we click enter, it'll take us to our dashboard where we can see this pairing code um, so we know it's us. And then we just click allow access. And after we've done this, we can use Stripe in the CLI. So what we'll have done is we'll have generated a, a session right here where we can work with Stripe. But so what we want to do now is we want to set this up so that it will forward events to our webhook. And we can do this with the Stripe listen command. So essentially what this is gonna do right here is we are gonna tell Stripe that for any events, we want to forward them to localhost 6789-my webhook, which is where our express server is gonna be listening for these events. And these events, you can trigger them with the Stripe CLI, but you can also, they're triggered by using uh, Stripe's payment flow. So when we submit that payment through the payment form with our, that we create right here, this will trigger an event that gets forwarded to our webhook. So if I click enter right here, we can see that we're ready to forward events. And what we wanna do right here is take this webhook signing secret. So copy this and inside in our environment variable, do stripe webhook secret and just paste it in right here. And so essentially webhook secrets are used along with a stripe signature to verify that the webhook request came from stripe. So it's a security measure. So not anyone can just send requests to our route. But now that we have our stripe webhook secret, let's also bring it into our server file let me minimize this a bit and at the top of the page copy it and paste it right here but now let's code our webhook endpoint so we've got stripe set up to forward forward events to our webhook but we need to actually create it and so the, once again a stripe webhook is just a route and we've called it my webhook so let's create an express middleware to handle requests to this route so i'm just going to paste this in but essentially it's a post request to my webhook and what we're going to do is First, we're gonna get the Stripe signature from the headers, and then using this signature and our webhook secret and the request body, we're gonna construct the event. So essentially, the signature is used to verify the source of the webhook request as Stripe, and this will prevent fake payloads. And now what we want to do is check if the event type, so there's lots of different types, but the one we're interested in is checkout.session.completed. And if this is the case, then we log out, we're just gonna log the event to the console, but in a real world scenario, what you would want to do right here is use the, the data in the event to store customer data in the database, uh, maybe send a receipt as an email, mark the customer as true for that they've paid, things like that. So this is a very important part in here. So essentially each event type of Stripe will contain data related to the event. And in this case, for checkout session completed, it'll contain information such as the who the customer is, what they bought, um, payment information, things like that. And then for any other event, we're just gonna log out unhandled and just log the event to the console. And then we're gonna send back a 200 and a 400 if something went wrong. And something important is Stripe requires the webhook payload to be a string or buffer. So this request body right here. And this is why we're using express.raw because this is a middleware that parses request payloads into a buffer. So we parse the payload into a buffer. And then after that, we can use this buffer right here to construct the event. But that's all we have to do for our webhook. 
So now after the webhook event has been handled, so after this has been handled and we send back a 200, the user will be redirected to our success URL that we deter that we made right here. So now what we're going to do with this is we're going to customize the success page by using the details from the checkout session. So what we're going to specifically do is display the customer's name, but we can do other things like payment amount, whatever is involved in the session. But so let's handle this success route. So beneath this post request, but so I'm going to paste this right here. And essentially what we're going to do is we're just going to get the session ID from the query parameters and use that to retrieve a Stripe session. So we use the session ID to get the session. And then we're going to say thank you for your order and use a property, which is customer details. And then it'll be the customer's name to create some HTML or a custom HTML page to send back. And now that we've got our success, let's also just handle our cancel URL. And for this, I'm not really going to do anything special. I'm just going to paste in dash cancel and just respond with canceled. But this is all we have to get this up and running. So or actually what we need to do is we of course need to have express listening for requests. So at the very end here, I'm just going to do app.listen on the port and host. But now let's leave our Stripe running right here. And I'm going to open up another terminal. And in this one, we're just going to run npm start. And once again, I need to update my node version. So now I'm using the right version. So if we run npm start like this, our server is running on localhost 6789. But so let's go to where that's running, which is localhost 6789. And we can see right here that we have our button saying buy wit scepter. So when we click on this, it should send us, it should create this checkout session and redirect us to the URL. So click buy wit scepter. And now we're on Stripe's checkout page. So just fill in some information. Use the test credit card, just 424242. Fill out whatever uh, details or card holder, postal code, but we can see we have our product right here. We have the price and our description, but let's click pay and see what happens. So we can see our webhook was hit and now it says, thanks for your order and the customer name, which I chose is Michael Jackson. But we could see our, our, all our logging out here. And if we look at our webhook, we can also see the events all logged out. But just remember that right here in this webhook for this event is where you would handle the payment completion. So on your server, updating the customer information letting them access a website, say that you're using, or whatever software service. But so I'd like to thank you for liking and subscribing. And also, if you could please download my Chrome extension called Witscepter, link in the description. Um, besides that, I guess I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.